What up all you freaks, geeks, and cinemaniacs? From the heart of Hollyweird, California, at the epicenter of all things eerie and awesome, it's time for Charles Band's Full Moon Freak Show. All right. <laughs> so here we are with the bigger than life Diana Prince. Welcome to the season finale Aww. of The Freak Show. Thank you for having me. It is such a pleasure. Uh, we began this together. I think you're in episode two. Mm -hmm. And, you know, over the last however many months, uh, especially because of the Full Moon Universe thing I do every Tuesday, that sort of call out to the fans, there's been hundreds of, of um, people writing in really sweet letters and a lot of questions. And I thought, okay, for the last um, show of the season, what would be more cool than to have Diana Prince, who, again, is... I'm a fan. You're you're amazing. You're a magic weaver. There's probably better ways to say it, but you're so sweet. But why not have <laughs> Diana Prince read the questions, and that way I can answer and we can have a nice uh, moment here for the well, fans. I'm happy to be your mail girl. For <laughs> yes, a day. that's right. I, I wanted to avoid that, but yeah. Darcy the mail girl. You now is that me. is that is that a Darcy outfit? It is. It's my wow. season five. Look. Season five look. <laughs> so every look, because again, I've seen a few. I'm, I have little time to watch too much uh, TV. But I remember a different outfit when I was there mm -hmm. and did the thing with Head of the Family. I change it every season just to okay. keep it interesting. Yes. Well, and it's kind of a studious look with the glasses. Well, it's, it's sort not of... always glasses, but I think I'm, I'm in professional <laughs> no, no, business mode today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's jump into this. And I should let you guys know, I looked at a couple, but... And I've read them over the last four or five months, but we sort of just selected a batch. If if I was here answering every question, this would be like a six-hour uh, oh, episode. So this is maybe 20, <laughs> 25 questions. So here we go. You ask away. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Always. I have two questions, if that's okay. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> My first question is, with the success of the Baby Oopsie solo series, is there any chance to see a Jack Attack solo series? Wow. Well, whoever you are, oh, who's the person? Well, do you want me to, first question and, and do you want both questions? Well, just tell the name of the person okay, that way. Okay, so it's from Dawson Quick. Okay, so Dawson, you're sort of a, a mind reader because <laughs> we are literally writing and preparing demonic toys jack attack because wow. we want to, you know, bring life to all these characters from all the more well-known franchises. So the answer is yes. And you'll we're shooting early next year and you will see it next year. Amazing. You want a second question? Sure. Okay. Will we ever get a NECA set for the demonic toys like we got for Puppet Master? Yes, I believe so. I, I, that's not my business. I mean, NECA is an amazing company. They did a great yes, job are. with the Puppet Master characters. And the next set of four coming out, I think, in March or April. So for those of you who have been asking, oh, when are we going to see more Puppet Master characters? But I'm sure we will segue into demonic toys, especially with the all the heat now on Baby Oopsie and Jack Attack. And wow. we have so many uh, of these wonderful characters. So we want to give them their own birth, their own their own shows. And I'm sure NECA will be part of that. Amazing. I love so NECA that's, too. So that's Dawson, right? <laughs> yes. Dawson's Okay. Quick. So here, let me take Dawson. All right. That way. Oh, you, okay, you did good. I was going to say down it. so we know. Okay. I, was, <laughs> you, I got this. Okay. You do. You do. You do. <laughs> all right. Next question. Will we ever get a Leech Lady origin film? Ooh. You know there's an awesome story to be told there, and she deserves more recognition. Agreed. Wow. From jnatal615 at Gmail. <laughs> okay. Um, it's so ironic, and I've told the story before, but briefly, uh, when we made the first Puppet Master, which was a big success, we were distributed by Paramount, they called us into this huge meeting as we were prepping the second Puppet Master, and they said, you got to get rid of Leech Woman. Too many people are offended by Leech Woman. What? They said that. That's and, and, you know, back then, we were happy to be on board the Paramount uh, cruise ship, and that's why in Puppet Master 2, she gets burned. You know, she burns up in a furnace. And that's why recently, I don't know what inspired us, we now have, for people who sign up to Full Moon Features, we're giving away a free furnace leech woman a burned up leech woman and Aww. they're super cool we only have a few hundred uh, we, we i made that announcement last week and in 48 hours look they were gone we have maybe another hundred or so coming in in january so the answer is of course you know leech woman you know is, is near story. and dear to a lot of weirdos out there and people who who love 
creepy, bizarre dolls. And she <laughs> is definitely one of the best. Agreed. All right. Next question. You're very good at this, by the way. <laughs> very good. It's my job. Yes. Hi, Mr. Band. Uh oh. Okay. I have two questions again. <laughs> First, how's Tim Thomerson? Would love to see a proper conclusion to the Jack death story. Transfer seven deaths, deaths end. Right. I have a pitch in mind. By the way, Transfers 2 blooper reel is one of my favorite blooper reels ever. Uh, well, um, Tim is doing well. Uh, we haven't spoken for about a year. He came a few years ago to the San Diego Comic Convention, which was a thrill to have him there at our booth. Tim and I go back, obviously, many years, all the way back to a movie called Metal Storm, The Destruction <laughs> of Jared Sin. And Tim also played uh, characters in one of my two favorite top ten Full Moon franchises, Transfers, and he also played Dollman. And he used to kid around. He said, one day I want to fight Dollman as myself and kick his ass or whatever. Yeah. He has all this. But there's no immediate plans um, to, you know, it's hard for me to bring or make another uh, Transfer movie without Tim. You know, he, to me, is Transfers. Now, without spoiling anything, there's a big reboot that's being sort of talked about wow. that would, would – um, take the transfer story and, and reintroduce it to a new audience with obviously new characters. And the filmmaker involved is super well known, so it's very exciting. We're, we're sworn Spoiler. to secrecy. Yeah, sworn to secrecy. Aww. So transfers will live on. And I'll see if, you know, uh, we can reconnect with Tim, if we can bring him into something, maybe just have him on the freak show. So I've, I'd like to do that soon. All right. His second question is, what would be probably the most successful happy accident in Full Moon's history? Meaning, say something had to be done a certain way, it wasn't desired to be that way, and then lo and behold, fans ended up loving it. Thank you, Andy from Binghampton, New York. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, you know, that's such a good question that I can't, I can't even think of a good answer. A happy accident. What would be a happy mm -hmm. accident? I think any time a movie is made where it sort of is beyond our expectations. I mean, look, we're working with very little money. Um, we always hope for the best. No one sets out to make a bad movie. But once in a while, a movie turns out just so good. You go, my God, now that, I'm not sure if it's a happy accident, but it's a, it kind of makes you feel good that you've done something that exceeds sort of our expectations. So a couple of those would be, of course, transfers, no question about it. And I keep going back to Head of the Family, and I'm dying to make hey, a sequel. Please. I know. <laughs> Myron's got to come back. Yes. But as far as a little accident, something on set, um, I can't think of anything. Well, we'll take those. Okay. <laughs> All right. This one is a very important question. Ketchup on hot dogs, sacrilegious or sacrilegious? You know, oh, okay. I get it. <laughs> I, you know, I, I wish I was clever enough to think of a real – I have no idea what that even means. Okay. Uh, so me it's out. a debate on our show. Oh. I'm very pro-ketchup, and Joe pro Bob is very anti-ketchup. So How can you be – Is it sacrilegious or sacrilegious? Okay. Um, <laughs> I love ketchup. I don't know how you can be an American and not love ketchup. Thank I mean, you. that's like – that's it. That's like exactly. me saying, I grew up in Italy. I don't like to drink wine. I mean, come on. So I don't know high what five. he – Hey, high that's five That's the right sure. answer. <laughs> that was from Dave Brown of our – the tomb of Anubis.com. Sounds good. Okay. Yay, so catch I, you know, when I did read that, I thought, is there some sexual connotation? I was trying to <laughs> overthink yes. what this thing meant. Do you like ketchup it? on your hot dog, baby? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, but I love ketchup for sure. You're a good person. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is something I think about often when it comes to Full Moon and Mr. Band. I'm a big fan of Full Moon, of course, but also trauma films. What is Full Moon Features or Mr. Band himself relationship to Troma or Lloyd Kaufman. Thanks, Jim Hill. Hi, Jim. For First of all, don't call me Mr. Band. That makes <laughs> me feel like... It's well, respect. It, it's very sweet, but I'm just Charlie, and, and yeah. Um, Lloyd and I go back a million years. I mean, he and I were there in the trenches, you know, like little kids back in the late 70s, early 80s. There's no relationship except we're friends. You know, we've never done a project together. Oh, you should, though. Uh, yeah, maybe. That'd I mean, cool. you know, the, a team up, some kind of thing would be fun. But uh, And I respect his longevity. Trome is the only company I can think of, independent production company, that goes back to the early 70s when I started. I can't think of another surviving company. True. Yeah. Wow, yeah. You definitely need a team up then. Okay. Hi, Charlie. I have two questions. 
Will you ever make a new official full moon movie of Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys? And will you ever do a roadshow again? I bought a fan club membership to attend as many as I could, but then they stopped. Thanks, Eric Matthew. <laughs> um, well, Puppet Master, Puppet Master versus the Demonic Toys was a movie I did not make. Uh, as some of the fans know, um, you know, there were moments, hardship, lack of funds type stretches in my life. And back in those days, I forget the exact year, I was offered some money to let someone else go out and make Puppet Master, Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys. So, and because it kind of upset, not upset me, it was like, oh, bummer, I wish I could make it. I've never even seen it. I hear it's not awesome, Aww. but I've never even seen the movie. Be that as it may, I'm not sure if that's a movie we'll make. It's pretty ambitious. However, um, what was the second question or the second thing? Because that was cool. Will Sorry. you ever do a road show again? Ah, yes. Regarding the road show, <laughs> again, for those of you too young to know any of this, you know, back in the day, 10, 15, 20 years ago, when business was tough, I went on the road and literally put on a crazy show. I mean, it was anecdotal. I told stories. I had celebrity guests. William Shatner came, uh, you know, horror icons, uh, Bill Mosley. We bought, brought props. You know, we had guillotines. We chopped heads off. I inspired, of course, I don't know if I do this today, but I inspired a cast that came up. I inspired a girl to take her top off to, you know, beat the monster with her boobs. I mean, all oh crazy shit. I'm I know. It, sorry I missed all this. It was, it was <laughs> awesome, and it was exhausting. One, one time, I think I did a few hundred shows, but one period, I did 20 shows in 30 days. Basically, I was on the road. And you know what it's like putting a show on. This is not where you go into someone's convention. We rented the venue, whether it was a comedy club or a theater. We had anywhere from 400 to 1,200 people. Rented the theater, did the local PR, got local Full Moon fans to help us, um, schlepped all the merch, because that's how we paid for it. We would sell the merch. And it was a two-hour show. I get up on stage. We do all this crazy shenanigans. And then after that, I would sit down and sign for another two hours people's merch, you know. It was this is my life right now. totally fun, <laughs> as you know, and totally exhausting. So as a preamble, I will say that next year for sure, I will hook up with you in October Yay. and put on at least a smaller version of the of the road show at your Yay, event. So tell you. tell people about this event. Uh, Joe Bob's Drive In Jamboree. It will be in <laughs> Vegas uh, in October. I think that's all I can say right now. But yeah, that's good. Roadshow. I'm there, and we'll do we'll Roadshow do some stuff. Out. I'll bring some of my own celeb type people who've appeared can in these movies. Can you bring movies. the guillotine? You know, again, let me tell you how things go. Okay. So we're preparing for the show, and I've survived on. Obviously, I, I, to some degree, my stamina, because there were years <laughs> that sucked big time. But when we got ready for the road show, I really wanted to make a spectacular show. I mean, we had coffins. People picked out things. I mean, we had so much lights. And, and then we had to do this guillotine. So it was, a, it was the same guillotine set up as Alice Cooper used back in the day when yeah. he would do his thing. So this was not something that we rigged. This is something, I think it was an 18000 or $16,000 prop it was it was beautifully made the trick was really cool uh, and but of course the minute the road show was over and i needed money i sold the damn guillotine oh. it's not sitting in a warehouse <laughs> you know so oh. i can't bring the guillotine but having worked it it was actually really really cool the way the thing worked well we'll figure out something cool yes all right oh, next yes. question but yay thanks for coming to that yes okay dear charles band over the decades, you've created so many cult classic series that still spawn sequels or legacy sequels today. Two of my most beloved series seem to have fallen by the wayside. Transfer's got a few sequels, but the last one was 20 years ago. And Doll Man by the recently sadly passed Albert Pune. I'm sorry. Had a crossover sequel, not counting all the comics. Is there a particular reason for this or just a lack of someone passionate about a pitch? Wink, wink. <laughs> Thanks for everything and keep rocking. Dominic Stark. Dominic. Okay. So I kind of answered the first part with, with Lots about of transfers. Lots questions. <laughs> well, it's, it's pretty unique and cool. I, I, I would bet money that next year we will see at least know that a new transfers uh, series is being made. It's that close. So Amazing. I'm really bullish on that. And ironically, uh, Doll Man is under option as well. Again, when I say under option, this is not Full Moon necessarily going out and making another Doll Man. This is a much bigger company that would come in and kind of reboot the franchise. So, but <laughs> I want to know of, who. There's only three <laughs> right now that are in that particular uh, state that are optioned to third parties. 
and two of them are transfers and dial mail. Wow. Cool. Dear Charlie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have an idea for a Cyclops puppet solo movie. <laughs> it's the 80s. He's kept at a freak show at a carnival as an attraction. A fortune teller psychic lady has the ability to talk to him with her mind. She gives him enough psychic energy so he can shoot lasers out of his eye. <laughs> he frees all the sideshow freaks, and they get revenge on their captives. That would be great and fit with the solo movies. Thank you, Protector Drone. Protre pro Protector, pro Protector Drone. Protector Drone. Yes. Okay, I'm just going to call you uh, If that PD. is your real name. PD. That is a great story. <laughs> yes. Now, I think I've kind of made that movie several times or pieces of it, but no kidding, let's talk via email because that is actually yeah. a great – it's a great – I mean, it has everything I love. Freaking weird dolls, sideshow, mutants, freaks. I mean – Psychic. The psychics and Lasers. boobies. You know, <laughs> I, I will fight to the bitter end. People are now, oh, the boobies. The th you even can't even call them boobies. Why not? <laughs> what, what are we going to call them? Like breasts? That sounds ridiculous. Mammaries. Mammary. So <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a fighter for having a little bit of when I say boobies, a little nudity, a little something risque in these movies. That's part of the formula. If you make a great pasta sauce, <laughs> this is a really bad <laughs> analogy. Maybe we have to cut this out. There are things you gotta put in there, like the tomatoes. You gotta do stuff, you so know. Boobies are the tomatoes. I'm not sure if <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's the quote. Boobies are the tomatoes. There you go. I actually love that. <laughs> I'll be turning red. And we but. appreciate that you fight so hard for that's that. That's right. Honestly, yes. Good for you. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Seasonal greetings from Scotland. I have a question that I've been pondering, and since you have Diana Prince with you, <laughs> this, this seems like the perfect time to ask. We have seen that Diana Prince and Full Moon Features are a perfect match. And we know that she can do horror magnificently. Yes. I love you, person. Yes. But what other genres of full moon features would you like to see her do next? I hope the answer is all of them because we <laughs> like seeing her on our screens a lot. Thomas Canning. I'm not sure why Aww. boobies are tomatoes are still still in my mind kind of I mean, ricocheting. It fits, but though. It, it does fit. Nice tomatoes. So how do you answer that? <laughs> you know, I've stuck to a, a certain genre, but, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, horror. You can play all of that. Even sci-fi, fantasy, horror, comedy. And now you're going to be the ringleader of this amazing show next year. Yay. You're going to orchestrate it like a puppet master girl. Ooh, I am the puppet master. Yes. I like that. So I'm not, I didn't give you a very good answer, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep rolling. The answer is all of them. All of them. <laughs> Hi, Charlie and Diana slash Darcy. With your back catalog gradually coming out in high definition through the Full Moon Legacy Collection, very welcome, I must say, are there any movies of yours – where you haven't been able to locate the film elements? If so, are there any ways the Full Moon fandom could help investigate for you? Cheers and Merry Christmas, Paul Ryan. Paul, you're awesome. Thanks for that offer. It's detective work. You know, um, I wish there was a way I could say, hey, check this out. Okay, so there, the movie that I'm most, um, well, there's two, and, and you're going to be bummed to hear this. One is, it seems like we've lost the negative somewhere to subspecies four. And we will be making a, 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 box, a box set uh, of uh, subspecies Blu-ray discs um, because we're now in post-production on subspecies 5, uh, which is looking freaking amazing. Yay. But – and 1, 2, and 3 are already on Blu-ray. So what happened to 4? Again, shot in Romania and somewhere between the shipping, the thing, the negative, labs closing, it's gone. And we've looked high and low everywhere for this. So I'm now at a point mm -hmm. where – what we'll probably have to do is take the best SD master we have and bump it up to HD and do what we can to make it look better. It'll never look like something that comes from the original negative. Can't do that. And that'll be part of that box set. So that's a bummer about Subspecies 4. The other movie, which is, I mean, most fans are not too aware of, but back in the whenever the heck it was, late 80s, I made a movie called Pulse Pounders. And what Pulse Pounders was supposed to be, what it was, kind of what it is, was a, a trilogy of three half-hour stories, and each were sequels to movies that were, did, did very well for us in the mid to late 80s. So there was a Trancers sequel, and we called it Trancers 2.0 or something. There was a, um, uh, a sequel kind of, not a sequel, but a, a, not even a spinoff, inspired by Reanimator, and Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton were in it. It was called The Evil Clergyman. And the third one was a Dungeon Master, which starred Richard Mull, and he came back sequel to Dungeon Master. So the idea of those three, Pulse Pounders, and the negative, definitely lost. Now that one I have hopes we may find one day in a vault. But what I did, if you're really following this, is I took the 
the evil uh, clergyman uh, three-quarter inch tape, which was a, a work print, clean that up and we release that as a half an hour. So you can actually find that either on our streaming site or you know, on, on I think just DVD. So we have that release, that was a third. And we did the same thing with Transfers 2.0. I think it was called, gentlemen, what was it called? 1.5 City of Angels. Transfers 1.5 City of Angels. And that was another <laughs> half hour part of the Pulse Bounder piece. We never did Dungeon Master, which I'd love to do because in losing some of this negative, we lost some of the stop motion animation shots we needed. So that's a much harder one to mm -hmm. piece together. But one day, I think we will find that. So that's a long answer to your question. Those are the <laughs> that's two. That's a great answer. But here are two quick questions. Okay. <laughs> I have two quick questions. Is there a plan for a new box set for subspecies? And will there ever be a full-sized EB for sale? You rule. Thanks. <laughs> Nicholas Perry. Okay, Nicholas. I kind of answered the subspecies yeah. thing. And we've toyed with that idea. I mean, the full-size EB is like, I mean, it's big. But we're in the process of doing some really cool things in our new merch business. We're going way over the top with um, upscale, um, sadly more expensive for us and for the fans' uh, replicas. Uh, we, we have quite a lineup. We have a blind box series we're doing. So in all of this um, ambitious merch stuff, uh, it makes sense to do a, a full-size, uh, one-to-one scale EB. Would you do a working EB? <laughs> well, we want that. We have to. What we have to always put. We were advised by our legal counsel is non-working movie replica. <sighs> Come but on. then, if a fan wants to figure out how to connect something, and we have to do it ourselves. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Sorry. Got to give the people what they want. <laughs> Tim Thomerson, any chance you will work with him again on a new Transfers or Doll Man or even a Freak Show interview? Anything? Still have my Full Moon Fanatic card in my wallet. Thanks for all the fun over the years. Michael Wolinski. Michael, thank you. I kind of answered those questions. Yeah, totally. I'd love to have Tim. I'd love to work with Tim again. Got to give him a call. Uh, and I'll definitely try to get him on the freak show. And people want it for sure. Yeah. All right. Charlie and Darcy slash Diana. I was wondering if there are any plans or were there any. This is not written properly. That's quite all right. Or were there are considered plans <laughs> That's okay. to make any sequel to these following Full Moon slash Empire Pictures oh my God. film titles? Okay. We got a list. Intruder? Unlikely. Although that's a reboot possibility for sure because cool. of its sort of notoriety. Panther Squad? No. <laughs> Assault of the Killer Bimbos? Very cute movie. I, I don't know if you can bring those bimbos back. You know, what I happens, like you, you know, I feel like... Well, I don't want to go into this, but the bottom <laughs> line is in this business, if you're passionate about making movies as I am, I feel the same way I felt in the 70s. Now, I look in the mirror, I realize, okay, I'm not 22. But when you look at some of these movies and some of the characters in these films, you really like to go back and use them. How do I make a sequel to Assault of the Killer Bimbos, which is probably 35, 40 years old, without casting new bimbos? And I kind of don't want to do that. You know, I like those older now older bimbos. So, you know, oh. <laughs> that's a quote too. <laughs> now I older. like those. What was the booby one? Boobies are tomatoes. <laughs> Something like Something that. Something like that. That's a good one. We're going to use that. Cool. Okay. Continuing his list. Yes. Creepazoids. Creepazoids. Well, we could make a sequel to that. Cool. Mutant Hunt. No. <laughs> Savage Island. Definitely not. Uh -huh. Well, okay. I got to tell people quickly the story of Savage Island. Okay. So, Savage Island starring Linda Blair, was an early to mid-'80s confection. And the reason why I call it a confection is at the time we were just beginning to expand and make movies, and anything I could do to make a dollar was important to fund my pet projects. So someone said, if you can get Linda Blair in a movie at that time, you make a fortune. You go to the film market, you could pre-sell it, make a ton of dough. But she's expensive. And, and I thought, you know, she doesn't really fit into what we're doing and that's true, she, you know, the exorcist and all the rest of it, but couldn't come up with a, a good idea. And then a friend of mine at the time, no longer with us, he was making movies in South America, and he had these three or four sort of, I don't know what you would call them today, um, I don't know, women in danger, and then they break away and they kill their captives and they're in cages and whatever. These kind of weird movies, boobies flying, a lot of boobies and tomatoes. And, tomatoes. And, yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> So he said, I have these three movies. We've sold them in, in throughout Latin America, South America. Would you like to buy the negative? And that means 
owned the rights forever outside the territories where they were sold. Do you know the story? No. Oh, this is a good one. This okay. will appeal to your entrepreneurial Yay, uh, inner self. So I looked at the films, and you know they're in Spanish, but they're well made, and the girls and things, and evil guys torturing them, and boobies, and then they get escape, and they kill the guys. And I'm thinking, well, somewhere in these two or three movies, I could cobble something together, but I need a through line. I need something, to, and also something that would make it, you know, more of an anglicized English speaking thing, because. So I, I did the deal. I bought these movies from him, which it was not a lot of money. Now I own the rights forever to these three movies produced in, I don't know, Argentina somewhere. And then I had one of those inspired ideas. I thought, well, wait a minute. Maybe I can create a character who comes to L.A. She's escaped the evil drug lords, whatever they were. And she knows where Mr. Big is. And she goes into a fancy building and she kills the guy who's protecting Mr. Big. And then she has a, thing, a whole scene with Mr. Big where she talks about how these poor girls were tortured and Mr. Big denies it. And then he doesn't deny it. And then she kills Mr. Big. And I could shoot that sequence and interlace it with all the footage from these movies in a day. So a day. I did that no. in a day, in a night. Wow. Yeah, because it was a storytelling. Oh, my God. Then how did you? I didn't do it. Yes, you did, motherfucker. Whatever. Was, you know, all that kind of shit. <laughs> So I did that. We put it together, and I thought, well, Linda Blair, she could do this, and let me see if we can make a deal with her that was you know, acceptable. And I don't know what we paid her, but I know it was at least $25,000, which was a that lot of girl. money, a <laughs> lot of money. And I think we made some contribution to PETA because she's very involved yes. in that whole thing. So we shot this material, cut it together, and it actually works. Linda Blair, and she's there, and she's the poster is a huge Linda Blair with That's a freaking so cool. gun. We went to the film market, and I maybe I'm going to talk money for a minute because why not? I think I bought the rights to those movies for forty thousand dollars. I think the Linda Blair shoot was maybe another forty five thousand that night. The thing, the, and then we had to edit together. Maybe at the end of the day, we had. $150,000, which sounds like a lot of money, but this is back in the 35 millimeter days. You can't just type this out on a computer. This was real stuff. We went to the um, uh, Cannes Film Festival for pre-sales, and we sold out every major territory for a million dollars. So to this date, it's still the most successful movie we've ever pre-sold. Wow. Yeah, so we maybe had less than 200 grand in it, and we pre-sold it for a million. And I immediately took that money and made more... Empire movies at the time. Yeah, that's but that's the Linda Blair story. That's great. Yes, it's a, a good one. <laughs> we have two more movies on this list. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Crawl Space with Natasha's lookalike daughter, Sonia Kinski, in peril. Terrific movie. Great job by David Schmuller. I don't know how you make a sequel to Crawl Space. Now, it was a clever idea. Um, you know, it'd be nice to get Klaus Kinski back. That'd be difficult since he's dead. True. <laughs> so, you know, I don't see how you make a sequel. You could t take that theme and rebuild another movie. You could reboot it, possibly. But it was a creepy movie, too. And finally, Tourist Trap. Well, Tourist Trap, it, it, there's no sequel possible, but Tourist Trap will one day be rebooted. Tourist Trap will be Such retold in, in the hands of a wonderful artist and, and with a new cast. And yes, Tourist Trap is, we'll see the light of day again. Why are there no tomatoes in Tourist Trap? <laughs> Like, it, it seems like a movie that needed it, for sure. Okay. How do I say this politely? I don't want to put the director you don't down. Have to be polite. But no, no. <laughs> well, I'm respectful. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's the call of a director. You know, does okay. the director feel that a, a, a moment of a half a booby or whatever it is <laughs> is appropriate in the film? I don't think you miss it. You know, would it have been cool to have, a, you know, the chick at some point, her top gets ripped off, she's running through the forest? I don't know. I think you know. <laughs> it would be fun. If You're it, really good at this, by the way. We could do this. You. We could. We should have done all the questions. It was this thick. We could have done this literally I mean, till we tonight. We could do sequels. No, that's all right. We will <laughs> the next season. It'll all be about transfers. No. It would be fun if any of those mentioned titles had sequels that became a reality. Sincerely, Stephen Milan. Well, Stephen, thanks for all that. And hopefully you've learned or heard some bizarre <laughs> stories. All right. The Carnage Collection looks like awesome fun. Question for the Freak Show. In the years you've been in the business, is there one film you've never been able to make for whatever reason that is the one you would most like to make? Simon Frisbee. Oh, Simon. Well, thanks about Carnage Collection. You know, if you've made movies forever, as I have, and you have thematic movies that sort of can belong together, I thought, why not take 
in the case of the Puppet Master films, all the greatest kills and crazy moments and cram them together. And this is not a movie you necessarily want to watch, you know, sitting there paying attention to plot line because it's just a wall-to-wall -wall <laughs> montage of crazy shit. But it's cool for the background. It's good at a party. And then I thought, well, you know, we have so many franchises. Why not do that for the Demonic Toys movies, for the Evil Bong movies? So Carnage Collection, there'll be eight of them, literally is about an hour of all the material, depending on the franchise and the theme, just crammed together as just a that's such an a good orgy idea. of madness. No, it's orgy be, of madness. <laughs> yes, that's what, another quote. Orgy of madness. <laughs> boobies are tomatoes. Tomatoes are boobies. I forget which. I like anyway, old bimbo. That's so. But wait, wait. He asked a question. What was the? Oh, I forgot. Yeah. No, let's go back to uh, um, frisbee. Oh, the one movie that you wanted to make. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> there are more than one because you know you dream things up and then you. The reality is either it's not a good time because money sucks or it's too ambitious. The film that I was really excited to make, this is around the time shortly after Terminator was released and then Terminator 2. And, you know, I was close to everyone involved. Stan Winston was one of my best friends. Stan did all the effects for Terminator and uh, Aliens and uh, later on Jurassic Park. Yeah, and, legend you know, for sure. Oh, just amazing. And, you know, and I knew Jim Cameron back in the day. I mean, Jim goes back to the Corman days. Jim. So I had, <laughs> I had uh, an idea similar to, it would have been a similar, not similar in terms of a ripoff, but in, uh, kind of in the Terminator vein. And it was called Decapitron. And we had a terrific script. And it was this character that, depending on what was needed, would literally unscrew his head. If it, if, it, if it was a battle, he would put on the weapon head. If it was something where he had to disguise himself, he would put on his morphine head. It was really super cool. So cool. I know, it was cool. And we were getting ready to do it, and it's just it was just too expensive to do it the right way. Could you do it now? Mm. Think of the action figures. Like no, so I know. Fun, I right? know, and all the heads. Not really. I mean, I eventually used the Decapitron character in a Puppet Master movie. So he mm -hmm. kind of lives and breathes as a puppet, and he did have a couple heads because I can afford that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's basically cool. it. Very cool. Yeah. Hey, man. Love the newer series stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> when are we getting the Ginger Dead Man rebaked? And can you crank the Puppet Master vibes up on this one? You the man, Jack Russell, <laughs> a.k.a. the captain. Dude, captain. Dude. Um, gosh. Uh, We'll probably do another Ginger Dead Man for he sure. Totally yeah, I mean, he's a great character. And he wants the puppet master, he wants it to be more bloody. I mean, yes. we, we went a little silly with some of these movies, I know. And that's partially because of the time and the budget, you know. It's easier to be fun and silly and goofy than to actually blow and kill 50 people and do it the right way. But Ginger Dead Man needs to come back. Hardcore. Hardcore. Yeah. Yes. Which is what we're doing. That's the whole philosophy. That's why. Oh. Um, Dr. Death, is that it? That's it. That was the last question. It seemed Amazing. like there was a million. You see, oh, well. we should have thrown each page away so that you it's would have true. gotten, you could have made some hay out of the last one. <laughs> so, um, well, yes. We ended on a high note. We're, we're not, who said we ended? Oh, we're sorry. Ended. Well, we ended the questions. Okay, that's true. <laughs> that's true. So, what are you up to? Let's hear a little bit about, no, you are so good at what you do. Um, I know you're Darcy. I mean, and by the way, Joe Bob, if you're going to watch us, thank you. For lending us your mail, girl. Aww. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, one of my most fun freak show um, episodes was with Joe Bob. He's just full of He's information. Great. He's a man of a few million words. You didn't run out of any words at Lord, all. Lord, <laughs> that's never a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so what's kind of up? You're, you're, well, you're setting this thing up in Vegas for next year, which yes. is very cool. And then you've got a, a Christmas show. Christmas show, December 16th, where we're raising money for a Always three different charities. Wow. That's this Friday. Mm -hmm. I didn't and, know when this was coming out. So. And you know what's also premiering this Friday? <gasps> what? The 12 Slays of Christmas. Wow. On Full Moon Features. Very I'm actually really excited. It's, it's a wacky, silly twist at the end, but it's our first Christmas theme show. So, you know, after making movies for so many years, now we have a little Christmas. Christmas horror is know. so fun. It's my but favorite. But it's, it's not, you know, Santa slashing. I mean, there's a bunch of those, and that's cool. You know, there's a robot Santa that... We talked about uh, with, uh, with Joe Bagos um, or Bigos? Bigos. Bigos. Yeah, which sounds fun. This is different. This is very Full Moon centric. So it, I think Full Moon fans will enjoy it. And it is this Friday. So watch that and then watch our Christmas special. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> very festive but what else? Friday. What else? There must be some other thing brewing or something else awesome or. Um, I don't know. We're going back into. Uh, we'll 
season five is coming up. I don't know. I didn't know it was talking about me. Why not? <laughs> I know you're all male girl and you're reading stuff. But, know. you know, you lead a really amazing life. And we go back, I don't know how many years. What was the first thing? Because I have a, a pretty good memory, but like little pieces. I don't really Puppet go well back. And... Axis termination, I believe. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so I was supposed to get killed by Blade, and then we ran out of time, so I did. That is so tragic. <laughs> I am so sorry. Did you get killed by anyone? Or? No. Did just, you get killed at all? I just walked. But you know what? I was so happy. <laughs> I still have all the like Snapchats going around. And the first time I met you, I was like, look. And you were like approving my little German girl outfit. It's like, he liked my costume. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I was just happy to be there. That was, a se- that was a trilogy we made, and the first one was Axis of Evil, right? I'm asking people like I know. Brooks they, and how they, they know, know more than we do. <laughs> way more. I, the memory is sort of gone. But that we shot in China. And that has recently has come through a lot of the questions because in that movie, um, Leech Woman, what happens in the, the, <laughs> the sushi scene? Because I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, pops out. The guy eats it. And... But where's the uh, – thank – by the way – Thank you, Brooks. What the <laughs> fuck happened again? I, I'm trying to remember the, the, the sushi uh, thing. Um, he's eating, and then she sees, pops out the leech into the sushi. He comes back. Oh, right, right. He's eating. So, so it's death by sushi. Oh, that's amazing. It's death by sushi. I think that's pretty cool. That is very cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, well, yeah, thank God Brooks is here and people <laughs> who remember that. So, oh, so that was the first one. And then did, was Evil Bong the, the next the gig? or Evil Bong 666. Right. And then 777. <laughs> and then 888. <laughs> wow. And then, uh, yeah, 888. That's kind of where we are. Yeah. Wow. Supposedly the last one, but. It's not the last one. Yay. We got we to do something. I mean, that one was kind of fun, the restaurant. We got to do something intensely different and insane for another Evil Bong and team the bong up with other stuff. And we got to do like something that we, now that we can afford a little more, we should do something really extravagant. Cool. I like that you think 888 wasn't insane, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I thought it was totally great. I just thought it, it was a tale of the restaurant and the people. And, you know, it was a different sort of It vibe, was different, yeah. You know, but. But Evil Bong can also be, I mean, if you think of the original one, you know, Tim Thomerson made a guest appearance. Uh, the amazing Robin Sidney was in it. We had such colorful, there were boobies, the tomato Tomatoes boobies everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> On that was note. That Tommy Chong too? Tommy was Chong, he, yes. Uh, yeah, we, it was a whole different world back then. You should then. bring him back. Yes. It'd be yeah, fun. <laughs> we could. You know, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but I have to say this, how the world changes. When Tommy Chong accepted uh, and, you know, came on board for the first Evil Bong, and I want to say that's maybe 17, 16, 18 years, a lot of years ago, he literally two months before that got out of the slammer. He was in a federal penitentiary because of his involvement in selling glass paraphernalia for no bongs. Way. Yeah, that's this crazy. is this is how crazy we we I mean People who go, oh, everything's messed up today. Well, okay, things were more messed up. So we've kind of evolved past that. But yeah, he and he wrote an amazing book. I forget the name of the book about his time in frickin' federal penitentiary. I mean, first of all, he never hid anything. I mean, Tommy Chong is weed. You know, it's like, you know, he didn't hide anything. He, he wasn't selling weed. He was involved in the glass business. It's crazy. Oh, it's crazy. That is nuts. And his story was crazy. I remember on set hearing some of his adventures, so to speak, in prison. It was crazy. Do you know how long he was in? A while, maybe a year. <gasps> no way. Yeah, no. That. This That's is crazy. it's hard to believe these things. That's happen. literally crazy. Well, you look it up, and, and no and, wonder and, you can't sell EVs. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, back then it was like put non-smoking, non-movie prop. Wow. We had to plaster it everywhere. Ugh, so silly. Anyway, I want to end on an up note. So, yeah, what sure. is the quote again? Is it? Boobies are tomatoes or tomatoes are boobies? I want to figure that out. You know, out. either way. <laughs> it works either way. All right. Thank you, Diana Prince. Thank you, Darcy the Mayor, Thanks girl, for your sweetheart. Me. Thank you. And I'll see you guys in 2023. We have amazing guests. I, I'm not going to tell you who, but stay tuned. And thanks for watching. What is it? Four months and 22 guests. It's been really cool sitting in this little room and, and um, doing the freak show. So, ciao.